Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time here. If this is your first time here, then hi, my name is Roisin. I'm really glad that you're here. In 2023, I am undertaking a no-buy year for certain categories of products, but alongside the no-buy, which covers mainly fashion and beauty products, I'm also running a budgeting project. My budget covers things that I am allowed to buy but that I want to keep a cap on. It helps me keep a track on where my money is going. It's £250 a month but it is a rolling budget so if I overspend in one month it comes off the next month. If you haven't watched any of my videos I do have an introductory video to my budgeting project which covers a bit more in depth what the categories are and how it works so I will link that up in the eye if you want to go and have a look at it. If you are up to date then today we are doing the update for my April and May budgets. How my money's gone in those two months. Usually I try and do these monthly but I didn't get a chance to get the April one together in time so you're getting two for the price of one in this video. So let's get on into it and we will start of course with April. Now if you're up to date you know that I was already way over budget from the month of February that ran into March and then that meant that in theory I was opening April with a budget of £148.53. I believe I said in my March video that I knew April was going to be an expensive month and it was. In beauty services I spent £111. That was £41 on my nails. I think I needed a nail repair so although I just got plain nails and these are the same nails from the end of April, I've not had them done again in May. Although I just got plain nails because I needed not a repair, sorry I had an extension I'd broken one of them. So the plain nails plus the extension was £41 and I got my hair done which was £70 so £111 on beauty services. I spent £42 in April on beauty replacements and what that was I don't actually have it here to show you because I got it delivered to my office and it's still sitting there because I've not gotten about it yet. That was the Cult Beauty SPF box. If you're not familiar with these boxes, I got it last year as well. And it's a set price and it's then you're getting kind of way more SPF than you would get for that price. So it was £42 and say you got like £200 worth of sun care. I've got two SPFs I'm working between at the moment. I will finish them first before moving on to the products from the box. I know it's a much better way for me to budget in those SPF replacements to buy that box at £42 rather than buying those replacements as and when I need them because I know basically that box will probably now last me until next year when the next box comes up. I know that financially it's a much better deal for me to buy one box that lasts me the best part of a year than to buy SPF on a rolling basis as I need it. As I say it's in my work so I don't actually have it to hold up and show you but it's got the Medicaid one that I loved from last year's box. That's 50 something pounds on its own that SPF so that alone made the box worth buying. It's got another one of this which is one that I am I'm like here on this I'm nearly finished so I know that one's in it again and then it's got some other SPFs and a lip balm. I've not got into it yet but it made more sense to buy the box when it was available at £42, it's sold out now obviously as these things do, than to be buying my SPF as we go through the year. Spent quite a lot of money on socialising, so I spent £111.98 on socialising in April. The first one was £37, Lauren and I went for an afternoon tea and I think we had an extra cocktail as well. We actually had a voucher so we paid slightly less than the RRP. But the afternoon tea, if you're based in Glasgow, it was at August House and it was beautiful. It's got a sushi component. I know not everybody loves sushi, so you would probably need to like sushi because it's quite a big component of it is the sushi. Gyozas, it's slightly different. It's not a traditional afternoon tea, but if you like the flavours of that, it was really, really beautiful and really worth the money. So if you're looking for afternoon tea recommendations in Glasgow, August house, definitely worthwhile. The next one was £42 and then the other time that I went out I spent £32.98. So altogether that added up to £111.98. I didn't spend anything on work lunches. I am so pleased I've really been organised with taking my lunch to work recently so long may it continue because that definitely used to be a massive drain. I didn't spend anything on experiences. I didn't spend anything on books and entertainment, but I did spend £21 on homeware and stationery. I got a photo frame and I will insert some cutaways from it. It's from the Disney store, it's from the Peter Pan anniversary collection. I think the RRP is actually higher, but around Easter time they did some kind of a discount, so I got it for £21. All in all, 
in the month of April I spent £285.98 so if I say that my monthly budget aims to be 250 then even if I hadn't been over budget in March and trying to come on under in April I would have been over budget in April but I knew April was going to be a spendy month I hadn't planned in April for the Cult Beauty SPF box to come up that month I was hoping it would be May but it came up in April so I spent the money in April but I know that I've saved myself money in the long run by buying the box rather than buying it as and when I need it I spent a little bit more on socialising than I usually would have but it is what it is sometimes you just need to catch up with people you can't kind of put people off forever because your budget doesn't allow for it and then the photo frame as much as I love it again that was a kind of unplanned spend but I did really want it and I wanted it as soon as it was released so when the discount came along I was like do you know what we're just gonna get it we're just gonna factor it in and it is what it is so was a little bit over but kind of hopeful that I could pull it back being over that meant that I opened the month of May with a budget of £112.55 so we were really trying to squeeze it in May but in May what was kind of on my side was that I was actually on holiday over one of the weekends so I was only socialising two weekends in May and then I'm actually filming this a whole three days or something before the end of May I'm filming this the last Saturday in May um, but I don't foresee me spending anything out of my budget in the next four days so I think we'll be okay to just say this is my May budget so it did mean in May I spent much less on socialising than I did the previous month so in May I spent £60 on socialising all in. So I saw friends the first weekend of May, that's when I spent that money. I spent maybe a little bit more than I would have usually spent but basically the last time I went to their house we got a takeaway and they paid for it so this time I paid for it. So it was £60. Then the next weekend when I saw Lauren we actually went to Subway and we got salads and we both have the Subway loyalty app on our phones and as it worked out I had enough points so I ended up I didn't actually spend anything that week on socialising. I was then on holiday and it's now the last weekend of May and I'm not out this weekend so £60 all in which I don't think is too bad at all. Beauty services I have not had my hair or my nails done in May but I have spent £42 and what that is is that I have booked and paid my nails for the month of July so just before I go to Dublin in July I have booked my nails and I've just paid it in full just now so July's budget will benefit from paying that now. I'm feeling quite smug. Feeling good about it. Didn't buy any beauty replacements in May. Didn't spend anything on work lunches again. Didn't spend anything on experiences. I went to the theatre twice but it was when I was on holiday so that came out of my holiday budget. Now books and entertainment I spent £28.97. The first one was a book that I bought at home and it was the new Vanny McFarlane Between Us. Read it in a day if you're a Vanny fan. I'm sure you have this already. If you're not an existing Vary fan, like, she's great. You just need to read her books. She's so smart, so clever. The covers and the premise are always sort of as they are with, like, rom-coms. They always seem like they're going to be light and fluffy, but I feel like there's always real depth and real intelligence to Vary's books. So, really, really love her. My favourite, I think, is probably... I'm still most emotionally attached to Don't You Forget About Me but I think probably last night is like technically her best. This probably now is the third in that top three for me so really really good one, would really recommend it and that is Between Us by Vanny McFarlane. Then the other book purchases that I made were from the National Theatre Bookshop. So when I was in London I went to see Dancing at Lunasa at the National Theatre and one of my favourite things about going to the National Theatre is the bookshop. So they always have such a good range of plays so I made two purchases there. Originally written this down as being 19.98. so if I said the total already I just looked at them and actually it was £20.98. So my total spend on books and entertainment was £29.97. And the two plays that I got at the National Theatre, if you're interested. So the first one is Lemons, 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 Lemons. Did I say that right? Yes, Five Lemons um, by Stamp Steiner. So as you can see from the cover, this script is reprinted from the very recent run with Jenna Coleman and Aidan Turner. I really wanted to try and see this play with those two in it and... I just couldn't make it work. Couldn't make it work with budget, couldn't make with the time off work in terms of days when there was available tickets and whatever so I was really really gutted to miss it but 
managed to get the script and have read it and yeah, have confirmed would have definitely liked to have seen it in person. I've enjoyed reading the script so that one was actually £10.99, I'd originally thought it was £9.99 so had to update the spreadsheet there but £10.99 for the Lemon play. And then the other play that I bought was £9.99 and it was Mr Man by Enda Walsh. I'm a huge fan of Enda Walsh's work, Sucking Dublin is just one of my absolute favourite plays of all time. You get that one in uh, it's two plays in one book with Disco Pigs which is more famous than Sucking Dublin but Sucking Dublin is my personal favourite. So if you're looking for recommendations from Enda Walsh, Sucking Dublin is my favourite but Mr Man, I am really excited to get to watch this. This has also been recorded and it's on the National Theatre Live at home, which I'm not currently signed up to, but I feel like I'm going to sign up to it. Again, that would then need to come out of my budget, which is the only reason I'm not signed up to it right now. But as you can see, starring Killian Murphy, this production has been recorded and is on that NT Live at home. So I'm uh, going to have a read of the play and then I think maybe next month I'll maybe sign up to the NT Live at home for a month so that I can watch a couple of things including this. But anyway, that is everything that I spent in the month of May. So that brought my books and entertainment spend to 29.97. So all in all, in the month of May, I really clawed it back. I spent £131.97. So I opened with £112.55, so I definitely still spent over my budget, but I clawed it right back. We were only 19.42 over budget, which means I'm opening June with a budget of £230.58. Theoretically, if my budget is £250 a month, June is like the closest we've been in a few months to opening with a full budget. Having had to be under budget in March and then managing to be under budget in May, not managing in April obviously, I feel really confident that I can manage June. I'm not getting my hair done again until July and I feel like that is a big chunk spend that comes out every month. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get my nails done in June, just in terms of the actual logistics of trying to get an appointment and what she's got available and when I can get into town to get my nails done. I don't think it's going to work in June, so technically, from a budget point of view, that's going to save me a lot of money. I am getting an under eye treatment in June, which is going to be quite a chunk of budget in place of those, so kind of works that I'm not getting my hair and nails done in June so that I can pay for the under eye treatment, but it does mean that's the only sort of big expense that I see happening. I finished my daytime vitamin C's so I feel like I need to get a replacement one of them in June but that's the only two expenses that I really plan on having in June so we'll see what else I spend but I feel like as long as I'm sensible about my socialising and my plans and things I feel like I should be able to come in on budget in June without too much bother. Speaking of the month of June I am going to be putting up two videos a week so not this Wednesday because that will be the 31st of May but starting from next Sunday there will be a video every Sunday and every Wednesday in addition to the Sunday video for the month of June so do make sure you are subscribed if you're not already and make sure to keep an eye out. I think what I'll do is schedule those videos for 6pm UK time on Wednesdays plus the Sunday videos so make sure to keep an eye out for them. I'll put them onto the premiere because that way you get a notification about them. I know that's not great because not everyone can watch them right at the premiere time but I feel like it really helps the YouTube algorithm -y stuff. I know that's really boring chat but we're all slaves to it. Speaking of being slaves to it, if you like this video, if you are trying to watch your finances, budgeting a little bit more as well and you want to see more content like this then you can help both me and you out by liking the video because YouTube will then know you like this kind of content, it will show you more of it and it will know that this was a half decent video and that it should show it to more people so you'd be doing us both a favour and I'd really appreciate it if you did that. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, thank you for spending this time with me, thank you for liking the video if you have done, I really appreciate it and I will see you next Sunday for the first video of June and then every Wednesday and Sunday thereafter for the month. Bye!